Hey guys and gals, Bob Sellers here, your host and resident singing fisherman. Or I guess I should say resident singing outdoorsman. I've been doing a lot more hunting and shooting and that sort of stuff lately just because it's that time of year. In fact, it's late February. I have a birthday coming up in about four more days if I live. And um, I don't think I've been fishing since August. I guess that means I love to hunt and I do love to hunt. I love guns. If I could afford it, I'd have every one made and enough ammo to last me a lifetime. Uh, this particular rifle here is a Kimber Model 84M uh, Hunter Pro. I'm going to show you today how I zero in a scope. I'm going to be focusing particularly on this CDS system. This is a Leupold Variax 5. Let me see. I've got the box here. I'll give you the exact dimensions. It's a VX5 HD, 3 to 15 power by 44 millimeter objective, CDS hyphen ZL2. That's a 30 millimeter scope. It's got a side parallax uh, adjustment, side focus, and an illuminated fire dot duplex reticle. It's got their uh, CDS system, which is very neat. You just mash that button in and, uh, and then you can dial up to your elevation that you want. In other words, you set the gun at 100 yards. You set your rifle at 100 yards. And then if you want to hit something at 200 yards, you just dial it to the two. If you want to hit something at 300 yards, you dial it to the three and so on. And neat thing about this, loophole gives you a custom turret uh, depending on the ammo. Uh, now I'll show you what I uh, like to have with me when I'm doing this. Obviously you need some good quality in ammunition. I killed, uh, let's see, four or five deer this season I think with this gun and this Hornady Black ammunition. It's a 155 grain Amax bullet. That's got a, um, a nylon tip on it. Good to have a good uh, range finder. This is a laser range finder. Good to have a, a set of quality earmuffs. Want to protect those ears. I'm deaf enough as it is, and I don't want to do any more damage. And uh, I like to have a good pair of binoculars. That's a pair of Leupold uh, McKenzie 10 power binoculars. Of course, I can probably see through this scope better than I can the binoculars because it goes all the way up to 15 power. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is an extremely windy day. Not a good day to be uh, sighting in a rifle, but I'm kind of a little bit secluded from it here. Uh, I'm kind of in a in a tunnel here, kind of protected on each side of this long stretch of road by trees. So I'm hoping that's going to help us some, but I'm not expecting any uh, quarter inch groups today <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. But what I want to really focus on in this video is this CDS system by Leupold. Now, I watched hundreds of videos when I was researching this rifle scope. I had a Vortex scope on here that just was not very good quality. In bright light, like right now, it was fine, but in low light conditions, in fact, the last deer I shot uh, this year, I almost missed her just because it was low light and I could see so much better through my binoculars than I could that scope, it wasn't funny and it had gotten real late. That's the beauty of these Leupold optics. I think for the money, they are the best scope on the market. There's better scopes, but they're gonna cost you two, three times what this scope does. This scope retails uh, for $1,299. I got it a little bit cheaper than that off of budsgunshop.com. First thing I'd ever ordered off of there but it was a couple hundred dollars less than uh, it was listed for everywhere else it's a really nice turret on here uh, whether you have the the factory one that they'll give you uh, and what you do is you put in all of your ballistics information the bullet that you use the um, the velocity the ballistic coefficient all that stuff and they will laser etch you a custom turret for that particular load, uh, which is really neat. But this is a good turret, uh, even without the customized one. 
But uh, again, in all the videos that I've watched, I never saw one that showed you how to set this up initially. So that's what I want to focus on today. Now, whenever I'm sighting in a rifle, I like to start at 25 yards. But first, you need to bore sight just in order to get on the paper at 25 yards. Let me show you how I bore sight a rifle. First thing you're gonna to need to do is remove the bolt. Set it aside somewhere clean. All right, our target is 24.8 yards from the end of this muzzle. So right at, right at 25 yards what we wanted. Now if you have a laser bore sighter, that's great. You can put that in the end of your barrel and then put that on the target and then just adjust the windage and the elevation so that uh, your crosshairs are on the laser mark on the target. We don't have that luxury today if we're going to bore sight the old-fashioned way. You can't do this with all types of guns, but you certainly can with a bolt action rifle. So with the bolt out, I'm actually going to just look through the bore, put the barrel on the paper out there at 25 yards. There it is. Tighten down that front. Okay, so I have lined up just eyeballing through the rifle, through the chamber here, and I've put this as close as my eye can get it probably on that bull's eye at 25 yards. Now, I'm gonna put my elevation and my windage um, I'm going to move it to the center of that crosshair. It's actually pretty close. And by the way, you need to have your gun in something very steady to do this. I'm actually going to leave my elevation. I adjusted the windage to the right. I'm actually going to leave my elevation as it is. And I'll show you why in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and fire off a shot and see if we can't get on paper. It's that Hornady Black ammunition. Man, I like, I love that eliminated reticle. Whenever you're firing a gun, a rifle, really anything, don't pull the trigger, don't squeeze, jerk the trigger, just, just squeeze it and let the shot surprise you. I'm just going to aim dead center on this big target, see what we get. Exhale and hold. That one half inches to the right dead center on our elevation so a minute of angle is one inch at 100 yards so at 25 yards to move it an inch you would need to actually move it um, four times that so i need to move 16. This gun has just been cleaned as well, so I've got a squeaky clean barrel. So I don't know about that first shot, to be honest. I just moved it over a little bit. Let's see what happens with a second shot here. All right, so I feel like we're close enough on paper out here at 25. 
We're going to move it on out for 100 yards. We've got it down to 100 yards now, so let's send one, see what happens. I'm going to dial this scope up. Safety back off. I want to accidentally hit the trigger. Not that it would cause any danger, but it would scare me to death. Got my side focus or parallax adjustment. There it is. Comes in crystal clear right at 100 yards. Like that. Well, I like this scope. I like this scope a lot. So out there at 100 yards, um, again, everything is, everything is magnified four times uh, versus shooting at 25 yards. So whereas I was close to center at 25 yards, it was a little bit to the right and just a little bit high. So what that equated to out to 100 yards is two inches high and five and a half inches to the right. So that leads me into what I really wanted to show you in this video is how to get your initial adjustment on this CDS dial. When researching this particular optic, uh, I got all kind of good videos, all kind of YouTube videos on how to use this CDS uh, system, but nothing on how to initially set it up. So as you can see, and I'm going to point out with a handy tool here, there are holes. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one on the back. We're going to loosen these little Allen set screws with this Allen key. All this came with the scope. Leupold provides everything that you need to zero this scope in. And we're going to take this off. Okay, so as you can see on this ring, up is counterclockwise so we need to come down two inches remove this and you have that now we're going to take a penny and put in this slot again up is counterclockwise so to come down two inches two m o a's we need to come down eight clicks clockwise you just listen and feel for it. There's eight. There's eight. And once you have done that, put, put it back on. There's only one place it'll fit. See? See it slide into that spot? And there it is. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up, uh, not knowing for sure if that's going to be my final adjustment or not. I'm just going to snug it up. We're back to zero. And you can't move it again without pressing in this button. That would be 200 yards if we wanted to raise it to MOAs. But that zero is going to be at 100 yards now, hopefully. Just my windage. What I say, I was five and a half inches to the right out there at 100. You see this line here? When you pull this out, you can freely, you can freely move this. So I'm going to put that back on zero. Five times four is 20. I'm going to go 22 clicks. Or five and a half MOAs. So these are two MOAs a piece. So that's, I'm up to two. There's four, 
and there's five. A little try shot right there and see what happens. I don't know how well that you can tell, but uh, this rest is not rock steady. Again, we're uh, kind of playing horseshoes a little bit today. We're not worried about groups, but uh, we do want to get close. So I'm, I'm getting steady as I can be, but if we're really, we're doing this properly. I'd have some sandbags and some other things. But this is a pretty good, pretty good little vice here. So let's let's try one more. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and let it surprise me to see where I hit. But I can promise you. If I knew this gun was zeroed and that was a deer, I would tell you dead deer because that shot absolutely surprised me. Perfect squeeze. And we're a lot closer. We're still a little high. Just a little. And this time we're only about one inch to the right. So I'm going to come back to the left a little more. Go. One, two, three, four clicks. I'm going to go ahead and move my zero back to that mark. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move that. I'm going to move that down just a little more because again, I want to be zeroed at 100. That's the beauty of this turret. Penny seems to work just fine on that. Again, just for reference, up is counterclockwise. So we're going to come down again clockwise. I'm going to go ahead and go about four clicks. Try it right there. dead center uh, windage elevation we're still a little high still a little high at 100 oh, I'm just gonna dollar down boy that fire dot is really neat I've just got it turned on real low it's just a small little fire dot imagine that and on that duplex there that is going to be sweet, sweet for hunting. It's going to be really neat just to just to know that where you've got that dot is where your bullet should hit. Go down just a little more. Let's go see what we got. Okay, this was our first shot at 100. Then I moved it and got right there. And I moved one more time and got right there, which is about an inch high. But I thought that I moved that to there. So that shot may just have been a little, little bit high because I moved it four clicks down after that and wound up two inches low somehow. But we're close. We're close. We're going to cover up some of these bullet holes now and uh, see what we get. One more time at 100 yards, and then I'm going to I'm going to scoot back to 200 yards. I'm going to try to get to 200, maybe 150, but I'm going to try to get to 200. Hey, another really neat thing about this illuminated fire dot reticle from Leupold is that after five minutes, it turns off so you don't have to worry about running your battery down. I think on the lowest setting, the battery, which is just like a tiny little battery that goes in your car's key fob, uh, lasts like 300 hours. And uh, you don't have to worry about leaving it on because it, it turns off 
automatically after five minutes of inactivity and then any motion on the gun and it without you turning it back on it just comes back on very very cool i got a little reinforcement here on my on my rest let me get something try to get something better going here a little more solid the front is solid as a rock it has to be but let's see here you can see my seat is a little bit uh, short for this particular setup i'm like this it's it's kind of real world you never know what type of situation it's going to be so this is kind of a real hunting situation when you're hunting things aren't always perfect um, i know i killed one pretty good sized buck this year an eight point and boy i had to act super super fast in order to get that deer down yeah i know this isn't exactly pretty but it's a lot steadier. Let's try this and see what happens. That was really, really rock steady. And I'm touching the red in the bullseye. I'm going to go up one more click because it's on the lower edge of that red. I'm going to see with this nice steady rest if we can't duplicate that barrel barrel's a little warm it's not hot by any stretch let's try this again little to the right but given these conditions I think I can live with that let's go check it out yeah can live with that in this wind for sure let's move it back uh, to either 150 or 200 I'll have to I'm gonna have to see and then we're gonna do a little we're going to have to look up some ballistics on this particular round in this rifle. So I have an app uh, on my iPhone called SBC Lite. That's a free app in the App Store. And uh, before I came out here, I did some calculations. And I've got a ballistics chart out to 300 yards for this uh, 308, 155 grain AMAX bullet from Hornady, Hornady Black in fact, is traveling at uh, 2800 feet per second as a 0.435 uh, ballistic coefficient and uh, my sight height is an inch and a half. So we're set and at zero, we've got that, we've got that figured out. I'm about to do something I've actually never done. You just don't have shots this long where I hunt. Probably the farthest shot I've ever made on a deer was, I don't know, probably in the past I've thought 200 yards, but it was, it may have been close to 150. I don't know. Well, no, we have one spot on the power line down here that is 250 yards. So that'd be the longest shot I've ever made on a deer. But I'm about to shoot 300 yards if this wind will not blow my target. I don't even know in this wind if if I can get it on paper at that distance. Uh, every now and then it's just a huge gust and I don't I don't know what's happening between here and there. It's a long way. <laughs> it's driving distance, I can tell you that. So uh, I'm zeroed at 100. My ballistics chart tells me that this bullet I'm shooting drops 13.3 inches at 300 yards. 3.7 inches at 200, by the way, and 13.3 at 300. So it really starts to fall off in a hurry. If I can't get on the paper at 300, 
we'll move that thing closer and we'll try 200. Uh, but 13.3 inch drop. I need this uh, dial to come up then. Let's see, I have a calculator. Some of you all smarter than me could figure this out, but if I want that bullet to move 13.3 inches at 300 yards, my calculator says 17.7 clicks. I'm going to go I'm going to go 17 clicks up and see what happens. There's one, two is eight, three is 12, four is 16. Let's see if I can watch that move. Oh, see, you gotta mash the button. A 16, a 17. Well, that pulled that, pulled that crosshair down. Good bit out at that distance. So, Let's aim at the zero at center and see what happens. Let's range that one more time. Can hardly see the target. 301 yards. Here we go. Got my parallax up to 300. Yep. It looks pretty clear got a good rest here maybe there's not maybe there's no twig I'm shooting down a road let's just see what happens Whew, that's a bad angle for my shoulder I can't see anything obviously ah, cannot do that again I had a major shoulder surgery. I was 25 years old and I've got rods and screws in there. And, oh, this is a light recoiling rifle, but boy, still. Ah, ouch. Let's drive out there and see what happened. Think we hit the box? I have no confidence. <laughs> we'll see. Three hundred yards is a long way. Wow. Guys and gals, I am absolutely shocked. Shocked and stoked at the same time. This thing basically did just as advertised. At that distance, I can't complain about that. It's one inch low and one, two, three and a half inches right. And I can guarantee you that is wind because there's a wind coming from the northwest west. That is wind drift. I bet you I could hold right there. But uh, wow, that is too cool. I tell you what, I'm gonna bring this thing in to 200 yards now and just see what happens. How cool is that? No holdover, no nothing. You just aim dead center, let that little pole CDS turret system do all the work for you. Man, I could not be happier with a scope. All right, so watch this. This is how that works. See, in other words, if I if I use this round to get my free turret from Leupold, where that's at right there, 17, that'll be a mark. That'll say three instead of a little over four, because that'll be 300 yards. Now, watch, watch, watch the beauty of the system. We just go back, right back to a hard stop. See, there's no play, there's no nothing. It's a hard stop at zero. Now, my target is actually, it's, it's really hard for me to range 
I estimated it and it's showing about just depending on where I look. It's just so tiny. So I figured out what happened with this rangefinder. There was one little blueberry twig between here and that target. I couldn't see it through the rangefinder, but I could see it through my binoculars. And that's why it was reading like 95 yards. But I got that out of the way. Now it's reading like 193 yards now. So again, we've gone back to zero here. Now we got to determine how many clicks. Let's see what my drop is first. At 200 yards, it's 3.7, and at 175, it's 2.2 inch drop. I'm gonna say three and a half inch drop at 192, 193 yards. We'll say three and a half. We're at 200 now. Well, this calculator's neat. I'll try to, I'll try to put a link for that. 3.5. It says go seven clicks. All right, so we're back at zero. We go seven clicks up now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, when I get my dial from Leupold, that'll be marked with a two. I'm actually just inside it. It's close to this dial that came with it, at least for this cartridge it is. It'll be different for every cartridge. Well, let's see how close we can get. The wind's actually laid a little bit. That's good. Ah, I think I'm gonna try to get down here. I've got a better position for my bad shoulder. That'll be much better, as long as I can get steady. And I think I can come down a little bit, move my parallax back to 200. Looks nice and clear. All right, let's send her. I can see that one. And it's also pretty close. Boy, shooting is fun. Be nice to just have unlimited ammo. Like some of these guys on YouTube with gazillions of subscribers. You know, I did 3.7. It might have been closer to 3.6 inch drop because it looks like I'm about one, two, about two inches low. Wind had laid down that time, so it's centered nicely. We're going to go back to zero now, and I'm going to get right up in that deer blind, that elevated blind that my father and I built in 1998 and make a 100-yard shot. Back to zero. Easy as that. Kill the wasp. It's only time when it warms up. Only bad thing about these enclosed blinds. Warms up. The wasp come out. All right, so there's been a lot of deer taken right here down through the years. We're gonna try us a little simulation. 101 yards. And we are back to zero as we're supposed to be. Double check that. Yep. Parallax back to 100. Put these socks filled with sand up in this window. In the window of our shooting houses a few years ago. What really helps you? Helps you get steady. You want to put the front of your forearm on whatever rest you're using. Try not to rest your barrel on anything. You can just change the dynamics of the movement when that bullet's going down through there. See if we can hit this deer. I've got the red dot on him.
Yep. Let's try another one while we're at it. Yeah, not a bad three shot group for quick real life situation simulated shooting. Well, guys and gals, I just could not be happier with this little pod. VX5HD, 3 to 15 by 44 scope with side focus or adjustable parallax and fire dot duplex reticle. It's everything is advertised. This technology has been out for about 10, 12 years. Uh, somehow, <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. I got in the market recently for a new scope because uh, the scope I had on this newest rifle of mine just was not performing well in low light situations, in real life hunting situations whatsoever. And uh, so I needed to do something else. I sold a scope I had on another gun, an old loophole three and a half to 10 by 50 millimeter Barry X3. Um, that was a silver shade scope uh, finish. There weren't any of them uh, on uh, Facebook. So I sold that scope for within a few hundred dollars of, of what I was able to buy this new one for. So that was really exciting. And uh, it finally came in today and I could not get out here to, I could not wait to get out here, create myself a range and see just exactly what it would do. Could not be happier. I am stoked. I hope you've learned something from this video and I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like this video if you would, that would help me out a lot. May the good Lord bless you. Just remember wherever you are, God loves you and so do I. And until next time, I will catch, or maybe shoot. No, I won't shoot you. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.